Hello, I'm Mr. Grantu. Welcome back to more Football Manager 2019, Swansea City, a Welsh development. Now, I have to say I'm recording this after the video because the original audio file did get a bit corrupted. So hopefully it sounds OK. I'll we'll have a look at the league table. And as you can see, things have developed quite a lot since last time. We find ourselves in third position. Just three points off Preston in the automatic spaces, but it is quite tight. We're level on points with Reading. There is a bit of a gap opened up ahead of Blackburn and Middlesbrough, and then slightly further back, Aston Villa, Stoke and Brentford. So we're certainly in the playoff conversation. And this is how things have gone since last time out. As you can see, we've actually been relatively defensively sound. Um, we did get knocked out of the FA Cup by Sheffield Wednesday after a replay, but I played a rotated team. I'm not particularly bothered about that. Focus is definitely on the league. In terms of our league results, we drew 0-0 with Preston, which is actually quite good because they're doing quite well in the league. Um, but we did follow that up with a 1-0 win against Sheffield United. The Leroy Fair penalty gave us the win there. A disappointing 1-1 draw with Birmingham. We took the lead and Lukas Jukovic unfortunately equalised in the 90th minute for them. Not a really fair reflection of the game. But we have been on a good run since then. We beat uh, Bristol City 1-0. And then a 1-0 win against Millwall. And then most recently a 2-0 victory against Brentford. Ben Woodburn breaking a scoring duck. Has been going back for a while. A uh, disappointing 1-0 result against Leeds. A defeat. Um, I think I'm just going to just play the highlight really. There are no words for it, really. I don't know what makes me laugh more. The fact that that's the second time that's happened to us this season. Or the fact that Cameron Kartovic has actually got the Player of the Match award for doing that. I mean, ridiculous. Since the last time, we've had a few transfers. We managed to get Ethan Ampadu on loan from Chelsea. He's still got a few things to work on in terms of his technicals. Um, but physically, he's all right. Mentally, I think pretty good. Some good stuff here. It's going to be a useful addition in central midfield and central defence. We also bought Hal Robson Carnu from West Brom for £1.3 million. Of course, the hero of Wales's win against Belgium in Euro 2012. Um, pretty well rounded player for this level. I think some pretty good technicals, at least at the top, and some okay mentals, at least uh, not on the, uh, the top part of that column there. Pretty good physicals. He's going to be okay as a backup striker, uh, but the main reason we bought him is because he's left-footed and can serve as a good backup on the right of midfield behind Daniel James. A few players have gone out on loan, including uh, some to our affiliate club, Newport County. And we have also agreed a deal to sell Christopher Nordfeld to Inter Milan in the summer for £1.1 million. Before the first match, I just wanted to have a look at the facilities that we have here, uh, because we will be having regen day in between these two games. As you can see, we've got great training facilities here, good youth facilities, adequate junior coaching and well-established youth recruitment. Now, this is going to be a key source of us getting players, because actually, as the save goes on, there's quite a limited pool of Welsh players available. Swansea um, will obviously be the main, main source, um, but the other primary Welsh club, of course, is Cardiff, who are our direct rivals. They're probably not going to want to sell their best youth players to us. We might be able to get some from Wrexham um, and um, Newport in the uh, lower leagues and non-league and a few other teams as well. But other than that, it's only going to be the Welsh Premier League, which I have loaded up, but they're not necessarily going to be of the standard of player that we need. So it could be quite difficult. And the existing pool of players isn't exactly as stacked as if you were doing this only signing English players or only signing even Scottish players. So an interesting challenge nonetheless. Two matches coming up today. We'll be playing Sheffield Wednesday, who are currently in 22nd, and Bolton, who are currently in 18th. Really two games that we should be winning if we have any ambition of being promoted. This is how we're going to be lining up. This is the team we've been using uh, relatively recently. Mulder's going to be in goal. 
Now Declan John's going to come in for Marcus Olsen because he's injured. Broden and Carter Vickers are going to be playing in central defence. Hopefully no more silly mistakes from Carter Vickers. Uh, Roberts is going to be at right back. He's probably been our most consistent player so far this season. Daniel James is going to be playing on the right. Wayne Routledge on the left. Ethan Ampadu is going to come into central midfield alongside Leroy Fair. George Byers is going to be in attacking midfield. And Ben Woodburn, having finally scored after failing to do so for a number of games, is going to be up front. Early chance for us here. James across. Routledge, double save from Dawson, who gets it away. That was definitely a chance. We need to look closely at results elsewhere. As Reading take the lead, one of the teams in a close fight with us. We drop down to fourth as things stand. Although Rotherham have immediately equalised. Working a chance through midfield here. Routledge and Padu. Puts it wide. Well wide. I'm going to tell them the performance was disappointing. Definitely should be doing better than this. Preston are currently drawing, so if we can get ourselves a goal, we will leapfrog them and go into second. Wannerin, Winnell heads it just wide. Okay, bring in Hal Robson Carnu for Ben Woodburn. Hopefully that can provide some inspiration he certainly had his inspirational moments buys with a free kick and he scores dawson it looks like he just palmed it into the net have a look at the replay <laughs> he's not the best goalkeeping in the world but i don't really care george byers hasn't really done much in a swansea shirt since the early weeks of the season but he's given us a vital lead here we better shut this game down and hope that sheffield wednesday don't come back into it Looking good. Tries another free kick, headed away, and that is going to be that. A fantastic 1 0 win against Sheffield Wednesday. We're up to third, just one point off Preston. And now Regen Day is here. We'll have a look at that in a second because, more importantly, I have finally been given manager of the month. I think it's only a matter of time. Rightly so. Thank you for the recognition. But let's have a look at our regens. And we've got every reason to be excited by Gareth Jones, who has the potential to be one of the most gifted players to come through the youth ranks at Swansea in recent years. Let's take a look at him. OK, he's a, he's a right winger who's a right footed, but he has got five star potential. Not bad. 16 determination. I like that. 14 player, 12 work rate, 14 technique, 12 free kick take. I mean, there's, yeah, there's a lot to like about that. A lot to like about that. Let's have a look at the rest of them. See if there's anyone who particularly stands out. Uh, there's a few with some quite good potential. Have a look. We've got Tyler Davis, a left back. Mm, um, yeah, maybe. And we've got Ryan Pryor, another right wing. He's English, so he's not even going to be joining us, I don't think. Uh, Barry Hopkins, left footed centre back. Moving on, so there's a few here that have a little bit going about them. He looks okay. No one really to write home about except for Gareth Jones. But, you know, to be expected in a first year's youth intake. Some bad news though, Ethan Ampadu has broken his leg. He's going to be out for six to seven months. And as you can see, his loan has been cancelled by Chelsea. What a shame. He's been really good for us in the games he's played. It's a shame we don't get to use him that much. Hopefully when he gets better, we might be able to bring him back again on loan or perhaps permanently. Now it does make me think he he I'm slightly suspicious here because I got a message the other day saying that where is it? Yeah, Matt Grimes we should play Matt Grimes instead of Ethan Ampadu, do a better job under current circumstances. Well, that's actually, it's very prescient. But then this says that Ethan Ampadu had his leg broken in training while being tackled. So it makes me slightly suspicious that Mr. Grimes may have may have wanted his place in the team back. Probably not, hopefully. But yeah, a big shame there. Declan John's also out for a week. 
but luckily Marcus Olsen is back, so we will actually have a left back for our match against Bolton. Okay, we need to keep an eye on what Preston, Reading and Derby do. There is a chance here that we could Preston slip up, we could move into an automatic promotion space. Rhymes the free kick out to Woodburn, saved by Olney. That was a real chance there. We didn't take it. Will we live to regret it? Absolutely nothing happening here. I certainly do pick the best games for videos. Nil nil at half time. Not what we want to see. I'm going to tell them it's very disappointing. They've done basically nothing other than that Ben Woodburn chance. Mulder makes a save from Wiltshire. We nearly gave Bolton the lead. Chance potentially to break with Whitburn, but it looks like it's been shut down. Mulder comes in, headed in by Leroy Fair. Oh no, it's offside. It was headed in by Daniel James and it bounced off Leroy Fair. He was standing in an offside position and it doesn't count. It doesn't look like we're going to get any luck today. Free kick from Byers. He doesn't produce the goods like he did in the previous match against Sheffield Wednesday. Derby are being pretty heavily thrashed by Aston Villa. But Preston are now winning against Bristol City. This would have been an opportunity to close the gap on Derby. Instead, we've let Preston take that opportunity. It looks like that's going to be that. Another wasted opportunity. Very, very disappointing. We're going positive for the last few minutes, but it doesn't look like it's going to make a difference. Bolton have held us here. Very, very frustrating. They're, they're not a side that's doing well. The fact that we failed to break them down really is the height of our problems. We just cannot, cannot find a way through stubborn defences. Our attackers are not good enough for the, for the type of team that we want to be. Ben Olmick there becoming the reincarnation of Lev Yashin as well with a 7.2. Not ideal. Maybe have a look at the table there. We end where we started in third place, but this time three points off Preston in second and a further seven points behind Derby. A frustrating way to end, but we are still in the playoff conversation. We've got a pretty big gap back to the teams outside the playoff, Middlesbrough and Aston Villa, so hopefully we can see it through. We still have a chance of getting automatic promotion. There's still quite a few games left. But there we are then. Thank you very much for watching. I'm very sorry about the weirdness of the audio. The original audio file got corrupted when I was recording, and we've had I've had to record this afterwards, and so it, I'm, I'm sure it doesn't really sound particularly good. But there we go. Um, thank you very much for watching. Nevertheless, like and subscribe if you want to, and I will see you next time, probably around the sort of Ipswich Hull games if we're in the mix for automatic spaces. We'll see.